the Netflix Cleopatra saga has uprooted a lot of discussions about anti-black sentiments in Egypt and globally. Finally, this guy speaks the only truth. I mean, like, he's so on point that I thought I'd share this video here. And I'm glad to see people like this who are actually Egyptian, who understand the nuance of the situation, who are intelligent, well-traveled, aren't threatening, and present the facts as they are. Have a listen. It's time to address the most annoying arguments in my comment section that happens every day. Were the ancient Egyptians black? And no matter what side you're on, I promise you everyone's going to get something out of this. So without further ado, let's take a trip along the Nile. If we start in Ethiopia, a very, very diverse land, we'll see a lot of ethnicities. Here are just some of the many ethnicities that exist in Ethiopia and Eritrea. There's a lot, like a lot, a lot. And many of them have their own languages that are very unique from each other. Different looks, different hair textures, different skin tones. They are very diverse. I'm very happy that he took it all the way down to Eritrea and Ethiopia because those are the sources of the Blue Nile, one of the major sustenances of ancient Egypt. Even Imhotep the Great constantly referenced this part of the world as Upper Egypt and beyond Upper Egypt to where the Nile originates. Imhotep the Great talked about it, and I'm glad he's talking about it. And some of the languages are from proto-languages from other parts of Africa, but some of the languages that exist in Ethiopia and Eritrea are Afroasiatic, which are very similar to um, Hebrew or Arabic. And as you will see, all of these countries I'm going to show you are very diverse, and that has to do with migration patterns of early, early humans. Let's move up to Sudan, an even more diverse place. Home of the Dinka, which I think are the tallest ethnicity in the world. The Beha people. And as you go more north, the Nubian people. And I'm not joking when I say I'm barely scratching the surface of the diversity of Sudan and Ethiopia. But, case in point, look at their features. And then look at this man's features. Very, very different. The next and last stop of our tour, let's go to South Egypt, starting in Aswan. The ethnicities that exist in Aswan are majority Nubians, who look like this, and they dress very similar to Saidis. Very similar. They do have different um, Galabias, they do have different uh, languages, but they both speak Arabic, and they both coexist with each other. Right. A quick point about the Saidis. The Saidis are a major ethnic group in Egypt. I know the numbers are down, and now they're seen as a minority and may, um, basically living in the south. That is because their population over the years has been systematically kept down by absolutely catastrophically terrible acts by the Egyptian government. I should do a video about that on its own, covering what happened to the Saidis in terms of their population and the active culling of it. But let's carry on with this video. And the more you travel up and up in Egypt, you'll see just more Saidis. These are more Sa These are traditional Saidis. This is one of my friends, Rami. His family is from uh, Said as well. This part of Egypt is also where my father's from. My father is a Saidi. But Saidis are exceptionally diverse in their own way. Some of them are as light as me or as dark as uh, the Dinka. But no matter what your melanin content is, in Said, everyone's a Saidi. That doesn't mean that there's not colorism because there's major colorism. They'll call a dark society black, but that term black in Egypt, especially there, does not mean the same thing as it does the rest of the world. Black in Egypt only means melanin content. They do not mean anything about nose type, hair texture, anything. It is just melanin. Finally, we'll end our tour in Cairo and Alexandria. People look like this, like right. this. Let me just take one moment to shout out to Rami Malik one of the best actors, <laughs> I think, uh, in our time. I know he's only young and he hasn't done anything extremely serious, but he did a fantastic job in the uh, playing Amun-Ra in, in the uh, Night of the Museum. He was actually like the best casting possible. He is an actual Egyptian who, you know, has both parents be Egyptian, who's got local 
indigenous DNA, etc. So shout out to Rami Malik. Uh, the other crucial point that was made is that black in that part of the world refers to melanin content and not necessary uh, features. A thing that might be missing from the nuance and understanding, especially in the United States. And yes, there are people from Cairo that also have this skin tone as well. There's very diverse. Africa is the most genetically diverse continent in the entire world. Whether an individual from any part of this you identify as black is up to your definition of what that word means to you. This man can straight up pass for my uncle, and he's Ethiopian. And this man could also pass for my uncle. So, what do you think? Well, I am with you 100%. I totally agree, and I'm not surprised that you're as knowledgeable as you are because you are actually from those areas. All right, peace.